Welcome to Calvary Temple Church here in the heart of downtown Winnipeg. Calvary Temple is people, people of all generations and all nations. Stay tuned for a message of hope and encouragement. We continue today in our series of messages on spiritual gifts. Now, it is true that some of the spiritual gifts that you will find in the Bible are absolutely supernatural. For example, the list in 1 Corinthians 12 that talks about healing and miracles. Well, those are supernatural gifts. They they can't happen without the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way they can happen. And so there are lists that have to do with healing and discernment of spirits and all of that. But then we have this list that we're looking at in our series, and it's from Romans 12. And this list is different. It has to do with the inner motivation that people sometimes are born with, and then God adds to it and gives a, a sense of calling in that area, but it has to do with natural gifting as well as sometimes God's supernaturals, the natural. And so today, as we look at this gift, this gift of giving, we will see that in the Bible there, are, there doesn't seem to be one single person who fits the bill. When we talked about an encourager, we talked about Barnabas. When we talked about a server, we talked about Martha. When we talked about a teacher, learner, we talked about the Apostle Paul. And I just couldn't find one person to fit, but I want you to know that it is in the list, and we will read it from Romans 12 now. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. If your gift is giving, then be sure and give generously. Now, we can all see merit today in allowing this scripture to challenge us. I don't know that we need to necessarily have the supernatural gift of giving in order to learn from today's message. Because the truth is that motivational gifts involve the application of universal principles. This list in Romans 12 can affect all of us. We talked about Barnabas. Now, you may not necessarily be an encourager, but that doesn't mean you can't learn to encourage people. You may not be a server, but that doesn't mean you can't universally accept responsibility to serve from time to time, even though it may not be in your wheelhouse. When it comes to learning from the Bible and teaching, you you may not be a teacher, but you can certainly share what you've learned from a verse in the Bible and share it with your friend on the phone and say, do you know what I learned in my devotions today? So we can all take these gifts and share them with each other. So here's what we want to share from the Apostle Paul today, characteristics of a gifted giver. Now, I have chosen to go to 1 Timothy chapter 6 today, and we find Paul giving a three-point, three-verse teaching, better put, warning, (laughs) to wealthy people who have not developed their supernatural gift of giving. Now, before you think this excludes you, let me remind you that in the context of the world, all of us in this room are in the top 95%. We, compared to the rest of the world, are unbelievably blessed and cared for, and for many of us, myself included, We are in this category, and Paul said, when you've been given a lot, I have some warnings for you. So here we will look at these warnings today. The first warning, 
the first reminder. To those who are rich in this world, don't be proud. Do not trust in your money, which is so unreliable. Your trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Now, a person who has been blessed and endued with the supernatural gift of giving gets this immediately. In fact, I call it an unstudied humility. They understand that they should not be proud because they had nothing to do with what God gave them. It's sort of like the turtle on the fence post syndrome. Do you know what that means? When you walk through a field and you see a turtle on a fence post, you can be sure of this. They had help to get there. No turtle got on a fence post without help. And that's what this teaching is inside a gift of giving person to the core of their being. They don't need to study humility. They get it. They got where they are by the grace of God and no other way. In fact, if a person has this supernatural gift of giving, you will never ever hear them brag about how much they have. Because in their mind, it's not theirs. And they certainly didn't get it by their own ingenious understanding of life. No, 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 no. Now, you will hear people brag. You will hear people tell you how. And I could even tell you how to get. Let me tell you, those people do not have that supernatural gift of giving. These people are humble. They have no sense of they own it and it's mine and I did this. See, they get this verse. What you do have, that what do you have that God has not given you? And if everything you have is from God, why do you boast as if it were not a gift? Wow. And that truth is in people with this gift. I think of Abraham in the Old Testament. I did not put this in the notes, but there's a man who... God supernaturally blessed. He never took it personally. He never thought this was because I'm so smart. He was very willing to give to Lot. He was very willing to tithe to Melchizedek. He had an understanding that this stuff was all from God. It was all given to him, and it had nothing to do with his greatness. So this truth, this characteristic of the gift of a person who has this gift of giving, that uh, they don't need a reminder to remain humble. No, sir, they understand that. Secondly, they have an unharried confidence. There's a de- they have a stability of the dependence of God in their lives. There's, there's no panic for a gift of giving person. See, they've got this Psalm 23 concept. The Lord is my shepherd... I have all that I need, period. (laughs) I saw this very, very clearly in a friend. In fact, my wife and I were invited to this family home. This happened about 25 years ago. They had a factory in Canada. They had a factory in the southern states. They were in a manufacturing business. They had been blessed by God in many, many ways. Sort of a perfect storm happened, and it had to do with the economy, and it happened to do with a tariff, and several things happened all at once. And they were in a very difficult place. And I remember sitting at their kitchen table, and I remember the wife of this couple said to me, she said, Pastor, I want you to understand, everything we have was given to us by God. And if God has decided we no longer need it, he owns it, we're managing it. If he's decided, the private plane, the two different factories, the homes we have on both sides of the border, if God's decided, the one who gave it to us, if he's decided we no longer need it, we're fine with that, Pastor. I went, wow, 
That's not how everyone talks. Because I know there are times when we go through times of loss and we're looking for whose fault and who can we blame and who can we sue and who can we this and who can we that. No, she said, God gave it to us. And if God decided we don't need it, that's fine with us. See, that's the motivational gift of giving. That sense of, I don't own this. This is just given to me by God. I'm just a steward of what he gives me. I want you to notice Paul's second warning. This is to people, wealthy people, who may not understand this gift yet. Paul says, command them to do good. To be rich, yes, but rich in good deeds. And to be generous and willing to share. Wow. See, these people who have this gift, they have a realization deep in their soul that riches bring responsibility. (laughs) Riches bring responsibility. There's no sense in a person with the gift of giving that I can do anything I want with what I have because it's mine. You will never hear a gift of giving person say that, not even come close, because they don't believe it. They take the responsibility of stuff, very, very important. It's very, very significant to them. I have a friend named Richard who he and his family owned a fairly large private family company, and they sold it to a multinational company. And at the time, I was their pastor, and they uh, said to me, now, pastor, you may think that our lives have just become easy street. And in the natural, it had. But Rich said to me, he said, "Uh, pastor, that's not the way it is. You have no idea the responsibility that I feel. I feel so deeply that someday God is going to examine my life as to how I took all of this blessing that I got all at one time and how I used it for him and how I preserved it and how I kept it and how I shared it and what I did with it. It, it's, a, it's a big burden, Pastor. I said, oh, I, I'd like a little bit of that burden. No, I, uh, he said, it's a burden, Pastor. It's a burden, Pastor. That same fellow, I remember, Tony Campolo had come to town to speak for World Vision, and this is about 25 years ago, and <laughs> he did that sweeping statement. I don't believe any Christian should drive a BMW or a Mercedes. And Richard was angry. How can he say that? Then he came to me and he said, Pastor, what kind of vehicle do you drive? So I told him, how much does that cost? I said, about this. And what do you earn? So I told him. He says, I want you to take what you're spending percentage-wise of your income and compare it to what I spend on my income based on what I drive. And in 10 years, I'll have spent a lot less on vehicles than you. That Tony Campolo has no right to tell me what to do. Why? Because he had the gift of giving, and he took his responsibility of giving and managing what God had given him very, 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 very seriously. And that tells you this is a gift from God. When someone has been given much, much will be required. A gift of giving person gets this. They don't need to be convinced of this. They understand that. They go to sleep with this. And when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required of them. Here's another thing that gift of giving people get in spades. A recognition that giving is a privilege. See, They don't see giving as obligation or drudgery. In fact, they get pure joy out of it. (laughs) They are hilarious about being able to give. And you know what their greatest joy is? Giving more. God's made it possible so I can give more. And they love it because God has put that in them. It's a privilege. So here's Paul's little warning. You must each decide in your own heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly 
or in response to pressure. In fact, do you want a gift of giving person to turn off? Pressure them. They don't respond to pressure at all. Tell me the need. Let me pray about it. Maybe God's going to help me do this. But don't pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. (laughs) They don't need to study that. It just flows out of them. It's all about privilege for that kind of a person. Now, let me say that obviously Paul feels that we could obviously learn something about this or he wouldn't have put it in the Scripture. And because all of us are so blessed and all of us have been given so much, even if it isn't our primary motivational gift, God is saying, you know, you can learn this. You can be blessed by this. You can give to others and you can experience supernatural provision and giving. Praise the Lord. Now the third reminder. In this way... Remind people, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Gift of giving people understand to the core of their being that giving is the only sure investment. You don't need to teach them that. You don't need to remind them of that. They understand it night and day. They are laying up treasure in heaven. We had 123 apartments for uh, 55 plus people years ago in Brampton, and there was a fellow on the 10th floor, and uh, he was a wonderful elderly gentleman. He'd told me this story at least 20 times, but he didn't know that. And he said, Pastor! There's a fellow who died and went to heaven. He was very wealthy. And Peter took him around for a tour before he took him to his mansion. And uh, he said, um, oh, yeah. Let me show you where your gardener, he came here about five years ago. Let me show you his mansion. Took him by, showed him the mansion. Oh, it's huge. Ah, your driver, he came about two years ago to heaven and look at his mansion and then came over the hill and he said, now I'm just about ready to show you yours. And they pulled up beside a little wee cottage. And the very wealthy man said, they got, man, and I'm, he says, it's, we, we've been working with what you sent on ahead and this is all we could build with what you sent. And, uh, this man, Mr. Stevens, he used to tell me that, and then he'd laugh and go, ha, 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 isn't that funny, Pastor? And you know what? It's not funny. Because the truth of the matter is, every one of us are sending eternal things. You know, the only thing we can take. I'm talking to my neighbor. About two and a half months ago, her husband passed away. We had her over for lunch. We're sitting after supper. She said something I could hardly believe. She looked at me. See, this is something that I'm supposed to be saying to people. She said this to me. She said, Pastor, do you know what I've learned from my husband's passing? He didn't take anything with him. I've been looking around the house. He left everything. There isn't a thing he took. Pastor, did you know that my husband didn't take it? I said, I get it. I I know that. Do we really believe that? Do you know the only thing that's going to be in heaven is people? No stuff. No certificates. No image. People. People. And so all of us, using our investments to help people come to faith, to help people come to know Jesus. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them. Thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven. Some of us need to hear that today. Now a gift of giving person, they live with that in mind all the time. 
How many people can come to faith through this investment? How many people came to know the Lord, Pastor, at your camp this summer? I want to invest in that. I hear that all the time. People who want treasure in heaven. People who want to know that people have come to know Jesus in a personal way. Treasure in heaven. Now, this treasure in heaven, let me just talk to you out of my heart for a moment. One of the weaknesses in a person with the gift of giving is that sometimes their family can become resentful because people with the gift of giving can tend to be, not always, but can tend to be very frugal with their family and themselves, very frugal, and almost hilariously generous with the work of God. And the family go, this, this, this makes no sense. How come you're so tight here and down at that church you're always giving away? And so gift of giving people need to be careful that they don't have resentment coming up in their families and in their spouse, that they use wisdom. And I actually, now you're going to wonder if this is true, but it is a true story. I went to the home of, this man's name is George, and he was having a struggle with his family. They owned a family business. It was a retail business. They were doing very, very well. And he had the gift of giving, and so he would take the receipts out of the till from a Saturday, from the week, and he'd come to church and he'd lay that cash, 10% of it, right in the plate. And his wife and kids who were part of the business were getting frustrated to no end. And she said, Pastor, would you come and talk to my husband? Now, you've never ever heard of a pastor going to see someone and telling them not to give so much. But I did, and I'll tell you why. Hear me out. Anybody who owns a business knows that you, anyone with a business knows that you have to pay your expenses first. And the gross receipts need to be used to pay your help, turn on the hydro, and all of that. And I said to George, sitting at the table, I said, George, do you know what your net profits would be for a week? I've never thought of it that way, Pastor. I said, well, the truth of the matter is you need to tithe or give on the net proceeds, not, not the gross Oh, I've never... Th and then she said, I've been trying to tell you this, George. And the truth of the matter is that when people who have this generosity that makes no sense, sometimes they cause resentment in their family. Sometimes they do things that are not wise. Paul says that some people let the love of riches ruin their lives. And one final point. Let go of one thing to grasp another. Let go of one thing to grasp another. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. I read a story this week of, from Alistair McGrath. And he said, I read years ago of a young man who found a $5 bill on the street. And he said from that time in his life, he was a very young man when he found the $5 bill. And from that moment on, he never lifted up his eyes when he walked. He always walked looking down. He said in the rest of his life, he found 29,000 buttons 54,000 pins and 12 cents and a bent back and a miserly disposition. But think of what he lost. He couldn't see the radiance of the sunlight. He couldn't see the sheen of the stars. He couldn't see the smile on the face of his friends or the blossoms at springtime. 
for his eyes were always looking down in the gutter. There are way too many Christians. We have important duties on earth. We have important treasures to protect. We have important things to keep our eyes on. But we forgot to release our grasp from the one so that we can grasp the other. I want to encourage you today, let go of those things that are temporal in order to grasp that which is eternal. And I pray that God, whether you are that gift of giving person and you're so thrilled that I preach this sermon and you say, Pastor, this is so great. I haven't heard a message like that for years. Oh, hallelujah. Or, well, Pastor, you sure ruined my day. That's sure tough. Boy, do you believe that? Yeah, I believe that. Because my neighbor had it right. My husband left it all behind. I want to encourage you today. (sighs) Is that gift in me? And I'm not aware of it? Is that in me and... And I've sort of been missing the point? Or do I need a little encouragement to stir up the gift? (laughs) To stir up the gift. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for watching the program today. I'd like to take this moment to pray with people who are feeling that drawing to the Lord, that sense of need. Lord, I'm sorry for my past. Please come into my heart. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Would you put that in your own words and just simply pray and ask the Lord to come into your life? Sense that godly sorrow, that The Bible word is repentance. Lord, I turn from my past, come into my life. I want to live for you. And pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One of the questions that I'm often asked is, can anyone come to Calvary Temple? And the answer is yes. In fact, on our website, you will see our times and the different styles of services and You pick the one that's right for you, and you come and join us. We'd love to have you. God bless you, and thank you for watching today. Pastor Martin would like to send you a copy of the book he gives to those he prays with at the close of every gathering. This book will help you discover an abundant life through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. To request your copy of the Abundant Life New Testament, write to us, visit us online, or call us toll-free. Thank you for your faithful support. Please remember, it's your financial partnership that helps us present this program week by week.